All right, in this video, we're going to talk about two other applications with vector-valued functions, and this would be finding the arc length of a curve or finding the curvature of a curve. Um, so let's start with arc length. So the length of a path, and this is a path of maybe a particle, um, where it has a vector-valued function. Now the vector valued function has some x components and it's got t's in it. It's got some y comp. It's got a y component with some t's and it's got a z component with the z with t's. So I'm just writing this out um, generically, saying that x, y, and z those are all going to be functions of t, and so we get our vector valued function with an x component, a y component, and a z component. Now, if we want to find the length of the path where the particle starts at time A and ends at time B, we're going to be able to do this by taking the integral from A to B of the magnitude of the derivative of that, that position vector, say with respect to t. Now, how this works, and essentially what this is doing, is it's adding up tangent lines. Remember that if you take the derivative of this position vector, um, so let's say that r prime of t, that is the, well, it's uh, parallel to the tangent line. So that is the vector. Um, I'm just going to write this and say that it is the tangent vector because we can move any vectors around in space and then make it tangent to the curve. So r prime of t really could be considered to be the tangent vector. So if that vector is tangent, what the magnitude is doing, it's finding the length of that vector, and then the integral is adding up all of those lengths of tangent vectors. So if we do this over something really small and we make each one of those tangent vectors, if we make it really, really tiny, then we would be adding up over the curve. So what this kind of looks like is, I don't know, here's a curve. Take a little tiny vector in here, find its length, there's its length, here's the next one, there's its length, here's the next tangent vector, find its length, here's the next tangent vector, find its length, and if we do this starting at starting at A and ending at B. Um, that's not exactly accurate there with that A and B. I don't like that. Sorry, because those are not X values. Those are values where T is equal to A is right there, and T equals to B is your end point. And then you'd get your length of your um, you'd get the arc length of a path. Um, so it's pretty easy to find how long something is if it's just a line and you can just measure it or you could use um, you could use uh, properties of triangles to figure out kind of how long something is. But if a path is curving, it's much more difficult to figure out the length and here's one way we can do it. I'll also give you here the formula for curvature. Curvature is a measure of how curvy a curve is, how tight a curve is. You know, if you sometimes go around a really sharp mountain corner that's a really tight curve, then the curvature would be, it would have a really, really high curvature. Um, if you're going around a really long corner, you're not necessarily going to feel that as much in a car, say, um, and that would have a much smaller curvature to it. All right, but here's the formula for curvature. In the numerator, you will take the first derivative of r, 
you'll take the second derivative of r, you will cross those two vectors, and then you'll find the magnitude of it. In the denominator, you'll take what you found for the first derivative, you'll find the magnitude of that, and then you will cube that magnitude. So it's kind of quite a, quite a process in finding the curvature. So the first thing you'd have to do is find r prime. The second thing you'd have to do is find r double prime. The third thing you'd have to do is cross product. The fourth thing you'd have to do is magnitude. You'd have to go back to r prime, find its magnitude, and then cube it. Kind of plug it into the formula. All right, let's do an Let's Let's find the arc length of r of t equal to 3t squared 2 root 3t natural log of t from t equals 1 to 2. Okay, so we need to find the ma or the derivative. We're finding the tangent line really here, the tangent vector. Okay, so the first derivative, the derivative of 3t squared, that's going to be 6t. The derivative of 2 root 3t is 2 root 3, it's that number out in front. And derivative of natural log is 1 over t. Now we need the magnitude. We need the length of those vectors for all time t. So the length is going to be the square root of all the components squared. So the square root of 6t squared, so that would be 36t squared, plus we need to square 2 root 3, so squaring 2 is 4, so 4 times 3 would give me 12, plus square 1 over t, t, and we get 1 over t squared. So now I need to integrate this, and as it is right now, this does not look like something that is actually integrable. But here's what we can do with this. So we could rewrite this. I could make a common denominator of t squareds in the, well, make a common denominator of t squareds. So if I did that, I'd have to divide by t squared there, meaning I'd need to multiply by it, and I'd need to divide by t squared there, which means I'd also need to multiply it by it. So this now gives me, in the numerator, 36t to the fourth plus 12t squared plus 1, and in the denominator I get t squared. So now I can take the square root of the denominator, that's great, and I get t, but the numerator is still a little messy. And I don't know whether you can notice this, hopefully you will from now on, but that numerator is factorable. That numerator factors into 6t squared plus 1 squared. And you can check that. 6t squared times 6t squared is 6t to the fourth. If we add two of those 6t squareds together, we get 12 of them. And 1 times 1 is 1. It's factorable. So this is actually equal to, now I can cancel both of those squares with the square root and get 6t squared plus 1 over t. And I can take this one step further and mult or, um, divide each term by t. So I would get 6t for the first term and 1 over t for the second term. Now I'm ready to integrate. 
Now I have found something that I know that I can integrate that is the magnitude of the derivative. So I'm going to integrate from 1 to 2. I'm going to integrate 6t plus 1 over t with respect to t. So this is going to be, let's see, if we integrate 6t, that's t squared, 3t squared plus the integral of 1 over t is natural log of t. And then I need to evaluate this from 1 to 2. Plug in 2, so 2 squared is 4, times 3 is 12, plus, plug it into natural log, that's natural log of 2, minus, I'll plug in 1, so that'll be 3, and minus natural log of 1 is 0. So I will get 12 minus 3, that's 9, plus natural log of 2. So if I were a particle traveling along this curve, I don't even know what that looks like. I'd have to I'd have to use a computer to graph that. And I started at time equals 1 and I ended at time equals 2. I would have traveled an entire length of 9 plus natural log of 2 units. All right. Let's do an example of curvature. So, let's find the curvature I think I'm going to do a pretty simple example for this one. Of the curve r of t equal to, uh, let's go 2, 4t, and 3t squared. Let's find the curvature of that curve. Okay, so we need to find the first derivative of it. We're going to need to find the second derivative. Then we're going to need to find the cross product of that first derivative and the second derivative. Then we're going to need to find the magnitude of that cross product. I'm kind of listing out all the steps here. Then we're going to need the magnitude of the first derivative as well. All of these are the pieces that need to get plugged into that formula that I gave you at the very beginning. Um, I guess I can remind you of that formula. So the curvature is r prime of t crossed with r double prime of t, the magnitude of that. This vector is divided by the magnitude of r prime of t cubed. All right, away we go. First derivative. Derivative of that first component is zero. Derivative of the second one is four. And derivative of the third one would be 6t. The second derivative. Derivative of zero is zero. Derivative of four is zero. And derivative of 6t is six. Now to find the cross product of those, I need to set up my matrix with i, j, k in the first row, 0, 4, 6, t in the second row, and 0, 0, 6 in the third row. The i component, so the i component, I'm going to cross off the i column, then I'm going to multiply 4 by 6, that's 24, and subtract 0. So for that first component, I get 24. For the second component, I'm going to cross off that J column. I'm going to get 0 times 0, so that's going to be 0. And for the third one, same thing's going to happen. When I cross off that K column, I'm going to get 0 times 0, which is 0. So the magnitude of these would be the square root of all of those components squared. I'm not even sure I need to write all this out because really it just ends up being 24 is the magnitude. All right, so that's part of it. So I can start writing out the curvature. The top part's gonna be 24. 
Now for the bottom part of it, we need to find the magnitude of the first derivative. So we need to go back to this first derivative and find its magnitude. So that's square root of all of those components squared. 4 squared is 16. 6t squared is 36t squared. So in the denominator, I've got that magnitude. 36t squared, and then I need to cube that. So that would be the curvature. Now I can find the curvature at any time just by plugging in any value of t. All right.